Hi everyone, it's Robin and welcome back to Happy at Home. Today I'm taking you into my backyard to share with you what I've done to get my gardens in order and then I'll take you on a tour. With all the work that I've been putting into the vegetable garden this year already, the rest of my backyard garden has been neglected and it has become a big weedy mess that needs to be dealt with. So as you can see, I have a garden bed that follows the fence line and pretty much wraps around the whole backyard. For this task, Finn and Rayma will be close at hand to oversee my progress and make sure I'm doing everything right. First order of business is to deal with all of the weeds. And so with my trusty metal weed bucket in hand, I started removing the weeds at one end of the garden and slowly made my way along the garden. I don't know why weeding always seems to take me so long, but this time was no exception. I had a lot of weeds to deal with. And let's just take a moment to talk about weed buckets. The one I'm using I purchased years ago and have grown to prefer metal buckets. Not only is the clang of the handle on the side of the bucket a very comforting sound, they are also very sturdy and durable. I have lugged around dirt, rocks, pea gravel, you name it, in this bucket and it hasn't failed me yet. And here's a tip for you in case you're like myself, who tends to leave her weed bucket in the garden overnight and then in the morning discover that it had rained and I know right away that I have a yucky smelly bucket of weed soup. It is not fun. So I drill a few drainage holes in the bottom of all of my weed buckets that way when it rains the water goes right through and no more weed soup. Anyways, back to, to the task at hand. <laughs> Once I had the first large section of the garden weed free, I decided to plant a few annuals to add pops of color and tide me over until my perennials start to bloom in mid-July. Here I'm planting some small zinnia plants, which I can't remember their name, but I know the label said cherry, which looks like it's a pretty pink red color. I also planted a small boxwood. I just love boxwoods. This one is called Green Mountain, I believe, which is great for my planting zone. I also planted a couple petunias in a light pink color. This is new for me. Normally, petunias I put in pots, so we'll see how this goes. After all the plants I had to be planted were taken care of, I decided to take out a knockout rose plant, which has been failing for the last couple of years. It's a little hard to see at the moment because it's covered with weeds, but trust me, it's in there. This took me a while to get it out, and about halfway through there was a puppy inspection. Next it was time to apply some brand new mulch. Adding fresh mulch to my garden is never a favorite task of mine, but once it's done, it looks so amazing that it is well worth the effort. And the dogs <laughs> absolutely love the smell of new mulch. I applied a nice thick layer and worked my way across the garden beds until all 10 bags I had bought was gone and another trip to the store was needed. By the time I was done with the mulch, it was looking like the rain was going to be coming very soon, but this section of the garden was calling out to me, so instead of going on a mulch run right away, I decided to get started on weeding this area first. Once again, the weeds were really thick, and I think this is actually the worst section I've come across. The dog stayed close at hand, Finn in particular, and I actually prefer this when the weeds are this big. Just in case I run up on some little critter that freaks me out, and they're able to run it off for me. Thankfully, we only flushed out a little baby bunny and nothing slimy like frogs or snakes. I wasn't able to work very long until the rain came in, so at that point I decided the mulch run was back on. I went ahead 
and picked up 17 more bags of mulch, which I hope will complete all the mulching needs that I have in the backyard. I carried it all to the backyard, stacked it up near the garden itself, and called it a day. While I was picking up mulch, I saw that they had hanging geranium plants on sale for $5, so I picked up two of them, one in pink and one in white. I decided to replant the pink one into this planter, which I found at Marshall's a few years ago. I love its shape, and if you're interested, I found something very similar to it on Amazon, which I will link in the description box for you. The plant itself was looking a little ragged, so I did some deadheading on it and gave it a little bit of fertilizer, and I think it'll bounce back real nicely. The fertilizer I use is just your basic miracle Grow. I give it a treatment once a week, and my flowers in my pots normally seem to do pretty well. I brought the planter out to my garden to fill in that space that was made by removing the rose shrub. Once I had the planter where I wanted it, I propped it up on two bricks. You may remember I like this look from my vegetable garden makeover, and I think it works well in the main garden as well. I then had one plant I wanted to split, so you can see here I'm adding one big clump of it. This is Moonbeam Coreopsis, which reblooms multiple times per year and is great all the way up until the first heavy frost of the year. As you can well imagine, adding the mulch to a garden bed this size took me a little bit of time, so over the course of a few couple afternoon sessions, um, I was able to get most of the mulch laid down and it oh, looks so much better with a fresh layer of mulch in the garden. I took a little break from the mulching to give these poor little hydrangea shrubs a little haircut in hopes that they will thrive a little better. And to finish off my garden makeover, I decided to give this garden ornament a new coat of paint because it was looking rather rusty and really wasn't standing out in the garden at all. The paint I'm using is Rust-Oleum's in a satin finish and the color is Heirloom White, which is my absolute favorite. I gave it two light coats of paint, of course, waiting for it to dry in between coats, and it really made such a big difference. With the garden spruce up complete, this is the view from my back door. Starting at the edge of the house, I have this very sloped area which I installed a rock garden in two years ago and it leads down towards the playhouse, past hostas, catnip, and snow on the mountain. On the edge of this garden, I have a few hydrangeas and a transplanted moonbeam coreopsis which is looking a little haggard but otherwise doing well. And then we have the playhouse area itself which I parked a little wagon in front of. Past the playhouse is the main garden bed itself planted with easy to grow low maintenance flowering shrubs, perennials, and a few annuals. The main garden leads to the vegetable garden in the back corner of our yard. I have a separate video on its makeover, which I'll link down in the description box. From there, a row of pine trees with hostas planted beneath them winds its way back up towards the house. 
To add interest to the garden, I've added this planter and a metal sphere. An adorable little red tricycle near the vegetable garden. The newly refreshed garden ornament looks awesome in its designated spot. And my amazing score of the summer, this vintage red bicycle is tucked in between two of my hydrangea shrubs. I think it looks pretty cute right there. But mostly, it's all about the flowers. I've kept only my very favorites to grow and enjoy. Garden flocks in a variety of different colors. Moonbeam Coreopsis with its bright yellow flowers. Cheerful purple comb flowers. And of course, hydrangeas. So that, my friends, is my backyard garden all spruced up with the flowers just beginning to bloom. As I sit relaxing in my hammock chair, watching the puppies run around the yard and enjoying the view, I know all this hard work was worth the effort. It's truly one of my favorite places to be. I sure hope you enjoyed today's video, and as always, thank you so much for stopping by and hanging out with me. I appreciate it so very much, and I will see you again very soon in my next video. Bye now.